so you speak about resourcing is a major thing that keeps you up yes, at night yes. um as a as the head of the organization and uh, and, and and you know you have spoken with many other leaders who you know at, uh, say the same what other thing you know is crucial as a head of organization do yeah. you think a lot about mm. um for for you in your case yeah. for an organization like ti so other than resourcing and of mm -hmm. course tied to that is sustainability mm -hmm. we want the institution to continue to be to play its role mm -hmm. in the fight against corruption mm -hmm. so it needs to continue to be there <coughs> But there's also, but there's also the, you know, as I said, mm. we we are we, we, TI was formed in 1999, mm -hmm. and actually earlier, mm. if you go back to the history of mm. TI, mm. Um, to, to champion issues on anti-corruption, it mm. came at a point where corruption was a was a hush mm. you know, topic. Mm. It didn't, it's not something that was in the news every day. It was mm. a hush hush. The you know, president didn't speak about it. It was mm. a hidden thing. It was very mm -hmm. covert, mm. you know. Uh, but then TI uh, and it was one of the organizations that really brought corruption to the, you know, to the forefront mm. as, as an issue that needed a, a taboo that mm. needed to be dealt with. Mm. Um, and and f so from that time, obviously, we are uh, people look up to us, you know, as the advocacy institution, but also as a reform institution mm. in terms of you know be, being able to 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 f to influence reforms in regard to anti-corruption. So there's the issues around policy. And legislative reforms and we've done a lot of that i think i've spoken earlier on some of the work we've done on accountability uh, focused laws access to information leadership and integrity the public officers ethics act the anti-corruption and economics crimes act the proceeds of crime and money laundering act all those had a, an input from transparency international and for some laws we've even been able to lead um initiate the development of some laws we started talking about campaign financing and no one was talking about it uh, now more people are concerned about the amounts of unregulated money mm. in, 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 our polit in our political system mm. in, in the campaigns and mm. the effects that it has mm. um, even uh, in, in regard to human rights and other crimes in, ter mm. in terms of terrorism, you know, wildlife crime, human trafficking, drug trafficking and so on. You know, because when it's unregulated then it allows other crimes uh, to continue unabated. Mm. Um, we started talking about whistleblower protection, we're concerned that people are not um, reporting corruption. Actually, mm. the number of people who report corruption in Kenya are very, is, is very little. Mm. You know, um, in our last research of the bribery index that mm -hmm. was published in 2020, mm. only 13% of Kenyans who encounter experience corruption will report. Mm. So what happens to the other 87% of Kenyans? They will mm. not report because mm. they fear being intimidated. Mm. They, they, they fear acts of retaliation. Mm. They fear they will lose their jobs if it's a public officer who has witnessed corruption in their mm. workplace. You know, um, they, they feel that they will also be accused of corruption, mm. you know. So, so, so they, people don't report corruption. So it's mm. very hard. In fact, I always say the acts, the scandals and cases of corruption, mm. it's just the tip of mm. the iceberg, mm. you know. Mm. There's a lot more underneath the surface that doesn't mm. come out because people are not reporting. Mm. So what we have, we developed in 2013 was a whistleblower protection mm. uh, bill mm. to, to protect those people who mm. risk life and limb mm. who come out to, mm. you know, report corruption. Mm. So we are still following that up. We hope that in this parliament, in the life of this current parliament, we will actually, we will see the light of day and it will be enacted. Mm. But so you see, a lot of people are relying on us to do a lot of things. Mm. We've, 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 we've raised a number of things in regard to corruption. Mm. You know, whistleblower protection, mm. campaign financing, mm. leadership and integrity. That is so mm. big, especially mm. now as we go into the elections. Mm. Um, issues around money laundering, mm. illicit financial flows, mm. You know, even unfair taxes mm. and uh, you know, uh, and, and and tax evasion mm. and how that ties in with 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 with, uh, with domestic resource mobilization and illicit financial flows. So that all these things, I would say that we are we are thought leaders mm. on a number of things. Mm. So people will expect us to do that. And mm. so as the leader of the organization, mm. <laughs> naturally, mm. you yeah. also have to do a lot yeah. of thinking yeah. and look at what well, this is what's happening. Mm. You know, mm. this is what's happening. Mm. And this is what we need to do. Mm. So, mm. like for instance, in this year, because mm. it's an election year, mm. there are a lot of concerns around mm. the elections mm. and uh, the quality of leaders, the mm. outcome of these elections. Mm. Who is going to come out of mm. these elections? Mm. Who is going to be voted for? Mm. And so, for us, uh, for me particularly, even from the time I took office, I knew this issue of Chapter Six, implementation of Chapter Six, mm. leadership and integrity. So, okay, because for, for me, it all starts with leadership. Yeah. If we're going to deal with this case of corruption, uh, the, the concerns around corruption, mm. 
we have to look at the preventive aspects. Is there, we focused a lot on the enforcement. Mm. But you know, we don't have to get to enforcement. Where now mm. we are chasing the criminals, we are chasing the people who have stolen money. Mm. We, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are investigating, mm. we are dragging them to court, uh, we are charging them in court, and mm. then we are now trying to build watertight cases mm. so that they can be convicted. And then mm. now after that, we are trying to recover the money. That is, for me, that is reactive, mm. but there's a preventive aspect. Mm. And for me, one big aspect of prevention is who mm. are we electing mm. to guard mm. our, watch over our resources. Mm. So, so for me, um, the, the issue around leadership and integrity is key. Mm. And that's why I'm, I spend a lot of time on, you know, mm. people always call me, I always talk about chapter six, leadership mm. and integrity. So mm. sometimes people ask me, Sheila, when are we getting to chapter seven? Mm. Mm. <laughs> and I said, we won't unless, until, until you elect mm. leaders who will ensure that they, 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 they have taken leadership as a public trust as mm. it should. Mm. They're bringing honor mm. to that office, mm. you know, because even when you look at Article 1 of our Constitution, it says all sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya. Mm. And they shall exercise it directly mm. or indire indirectly mm. through democratically elected leaders. So mm. it means that we as citizens have a great role to play in mm. terms of who we put in office. And we really need to ensure that it's people who bring honor. Mm. Mm. So I I mean, as, as so just back to your question, mm. as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a leader of yeah. TI, yeah. I have to look at the big picture. Big, big, big what are those issues? Because TI is entrusted a lot with the mm. work on anti-corruption, mm. and we are we, a lot of our colleagues in the civil society mm. sector mm. look up to TI um, on on issues around that in terms of thought leadership, mm. collaborative leadership, mm. facilitative leadership mm. as well. Mm. So you basically have to be that person. So I also have to look at the yeah. what are the issues, what are the concerns around corruption at a personal level, at a personal family level. I. Are you predisposed to any risk, any danger? Is there human rights concerns around the work that you do and how that places you? Well, uh, for now, up to now, I've not had any 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 challenges. Mm -hmm. I've not had any challenges, but I think there are a lot of when you talk to a lot of, um, uh, especially like human rights mm -hmm. defenders, mm -hmm. human rights activists, it's a big concern. Mm -hmm in terms of their own personal safety. Mm. But I, I know that there, there may come a time when that will be critical mm. for me. Mm. Uh, because right now, especially as we talk about leadership and integrity, as you are yes, we are going to do very, uh, yeah, we, have, we, we, we have to be very bold. Yeah. And call a spade a spade. Mm. We'll have to decampaign certain mm. people. Exactly. Like now, one of the things we're saying yeah. is uh, anyone who has been accused of corruption, yeah. who is a current, uh, an active subject of investigation, mm. who has been arraigned and charged in court, mm. who has been mentioned in any of the accountability, uh, reports of accountability institutions, mm. yeah, they should not be cleared to run for office. Mm. So that may create backlash. Mm. So as, as civil society mm. actors who are going to be pushing for this, you have mm. to prepare yourself. Mm. You know, it's not always going to be easy. Mm. I remember last time when we did the, um, the, we had a campaign called the Red Card Campaign in mm. 2017, mm. uh, a, a, an initiative of the Civil Society, T Transparency International, Society mm. for International Development, mm. and, uh, and and also and Zalendo and Inuka, mm -hmm. uh, so the, the the participating organizations mm -hmm. under the National Integrity Alliance banner. Mm. They some of our leaders had to get you know just 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 be be just go through even just security training mm. and all these things. Just mm. how do you but it's something that I think mm. a lot of mm. civil you have to as a civil yeah. society actor yeah. Yeah. you have to be alive too yeah. because you 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 know you're moving and pushing the needle yeah. in areas that, where people are, are very comfortable. Uh, uncomfortable yeah. when you're talking about theft of resources mm. jailing mm. conviction mm. of people mm. of course it's sensitive for some mm. people mm. and yeah these mm. are powerful people mm. again as I always say impunity mm. corruption mm. fights mm. back mm. so you also have to be open mm. about those kind mm. of things and I've mm. had to be a bit I've had to be alert that's mm. the thing mm. I've had to be alert mm. you know there times when you walk or drive in places mm. and mm. You're, you just have to be very careful mm. i mean mm. in terms mm. of how you how you conduct yourself right. where you go how right. you go right things like that right